Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where you'll hear stories about people who think the world revolves around them and that nobody else matters. Guys, I hope you're having an awesome day today. And listen, I've got another super entitled episode for you today, so strap yourselves in and get ready. Get ready to shake your heads until it falls off. Really, literally. Maybe not literally, but guys, do hit that subscribe button for future stories, and we're diving in. Okay, so a little backstory. I worked at McDonald's for just over a year. Now, during that year, I never really got the hang of making ice cream cones. Many got messed up, and many got given away. So, one day on shift, I saw an ice cream cone pop up on my order screen. The other crew seemed busy, so I took it upon myself to make a cone, knowing that I'm terrible at it. Now, we're supposed to fill the bottom of the cone and do no less than 5 swirls, ideally 7. I filled the bottom just fine, and by the time it got to the third swirl, the ice cream cone looked like it was about to fall over. Normally, the other employees would just throw the cone out and start over. I'm not like that. My dad taught me to never waste food. I remember back to being a customer, standing in the lobby and seeing McDonald's employees throw out ice creams. So I did what any good McDonald's employee should do. I took that messed up, deformed cone, wiggled it to the side so it was upright, and walked through the lobby until I came across a kid. Now, the kid was deep in his Happy Meal, so I tapped on his mom's shoulder and quietly asked her if the child would like a free ice cream cone. The mom shrugged with a, sure, whatever. So I got the kid's attention and gave it to him. He saw the cone and had a huge smile on his face. Now, it always made me feel good to do this, and it cost the company absolutely nothing, since it was going in the garbage anyway. I went back to the counter, saw that a crew member had already made the cone when I was in the lobby, so I got back to my usual duties, cleaning, taking orders, making coffee, etc. When the mom comes up to my till with a cone, she was very angry. The mom says, what's this? I told her, that's the free ice cream cone I just gave you. The mom then pulls out her phone, and she says, why doesn't it look like this? Do you not know how to do your job? Is this a cone that you dropped on the floor and you're giving to my kid? I took a look at her phone. It's our website with a picture of the ice cream cone pulled up. I told her, no, I didn't drop it. I gave you that cone because it doesn't look like that. I commonly give away cones for free that don't come out right. The entitled mom then said, how is that fair for my kid? You need to make me another one. Um, pardon? It was free ice cream. Yeah, but why does it look like this? It looks deformed. The ones on the website are at least twice as big. I told her, I mean, I could go make you a cone that looks like that, but it wouldn't be free. At this point, my manager's standing over my shoulder, well aware of the situation. My manager was a pretty funny guy, and he loved to poke fun at Karens like this, so he started to make an ice cream behind me. Probably the biggest ice cream I've ever seen. Easily 12 swirls. Almost twice as large as the one in the pictures. Easily 2 feet tall. Karen sees him making the ice cream and says, See? At least he knows how to do his job properly. She waves down my manager and said, Hey, that's for me. He messed up my cone. The manager then said, Actually, it's for OP. He's about to go on break and he deserves an ice cream after dealing with problem customers. I then asked her if there's anything else I can help her with, and she said, Yeah, free ice cream should not be messed up ice cream. I want you to remake it. The manager nudges me aside and stands at the till and says, Look, lady, the ice cream you got was free. Free. F-R-E-E. You don't get to return or exchange or ask for anything more when you get something that was free. Either go back to your table and sit down, or I'm going to need to ask you to leave. So Karen huffed and went to go sit down. I got my break extended from 30 minutes to 45 minutes and ate my huge ice cream, and went about my shift as normal. Okay guys, first of all, I'm surprised that OP works at a McDonald's where the ice cream machine is actually working. Second of all, you should never ever complain when someone gives you something for free, especially ice cream. Listen, I bet the mom was trying to score a second free ice cream cone for herself. And you know what? If, if she got that free, perfect looking ice cream cone, you bet your sweet butt she'll give her kid the ugly one. Am I right, guys? Because that's how some people are. Now, this probably needs some context before I start. Both my parents are divorced and live in two separate states. I live with my mom and grandparents in Nashville, and over school breaks, I visit my dad in New York. Now, I've flown alone since I was 5, and when I turned 13, my parents said it was okay if I travel with an escort on my layovers, as long as I text them when I'm boarding and when I land. Now, this happened when I was 16 years old. Now, I don't look my age, and I never have. That's a bad combination in my family. Short jeans and a baby face. And I was lucky enough to inherit both. 
To give you a rough image, I'm about a 5 foot tall girl who weighs 125 pounds with a baby face, so it's easy for people to mistake me as younger than I am. Anyways, I was coming back from New York and had a 2 hour layover in Baltimore. I decided to get some food at Chipotle. While I was eating at the food court, minding my own business, and scrolling through my phone, this middle aged woman with her two kids walks up to me. We'll just call her Karen. Karen says, Hi, honey, are, are you okay? I said, Yeah, why ask? Karen then says, Well, you seem young and by yourself. Are, are your parents around? Now I'm thinking, Oh, great, here we go again. This wasn't the first time it happened, so I calmly told her that I was fine and thanks for the concern. Well, apparently Karen did not like my answer. Her tone soon changed from a caring, concerned citizen to a demanding, crazy woman. She told me I wasn't fine because I was a minor by myself and I needed adult supervision to fly. Now, she was correct about the minor part, but the supervision part was BS. I want to note that I was flying Southwest, who allows anybody over 12 and older to fly by themselves, but someone is still supervising you on the flight until you're 15 years old. I did not need adult supervision to be in the airport past the security, and I told her this. I politely asked her to leave me alone, and I do understand the confusion, and Karen was not having it. She says, You are lying. I asked her, How? And she says, I have kids, and I know the airport policy about minors. I told her, You clearly don't. I've already said I'm fine, and can you please leave me alone? She says, No. Where are your parents? I told you I'm flying alone. She then demanded where my parents are, and at this point, I was getting annoyed. I didn't want to tell her about the fact that my parents were divorced, but back then, I saw it as the only way for her to fully understand the situation and to leave me alone. I told her, ma'am, I'm 16 years old. My mom is in Nashville waiting for me, and my dad is in New York. Neither of them are in this airport, and they both know that I'm by myself and are okay with it. I'm allowed to have a layover by myself, and I'm not considered an unaccompanied minor when I'm 16 years old, according to this airline. Now please leave me alone. Now I thought that would have shut her up, because she did get quiet for a bit. But then she said, No, no, you're lying. Ugh, how am I lying? I know you're lying because I have kids. I know how rebellious they are, and you are definitely not 16 years old. Look at you, you're like 12 at most. You need to come with me. Now, I was getting mad at this point. For one, what right do you have to tell me how old I am? And secondly, your children are 7 and 5 years old, a little too young to be going through a teenage rebellion. I stood up, put my food in the bag, and told her, I think I know how old I am. Where's your proof? I then took out my driver's license, and looking back, I shouldn't have, but I was desperate for her to go away. She took a look at my date of birth and scoffed. Karen wasn't going to swallow her pride and walk away. She doubled down. Karen says, Listen, that still doesn't excuse you from walking around the airport by yourself. How do I know you aren't running away from home? Now, I wanted to tell her that even if I was, that was none of her business. I repeated that Southwest policy to her and told her that if she didn't believe me, she could go on their website and check for herself, or ask an employee. I then repeated for her to leave me alone, or I'd get security. Now, my bluff seemed to not affect her. She said she wasn't going anywhere, and I had to come with her. I simply told her no and began reaching for my backpack. Karen then grabbed my wrist and started to pull me. I yanked my wrist away, grabbed my backpack, and started to run. At that point, people were watching and her kids seemed distressed, but I didn't care. I made a run for my gate. I eventually made it to my gate and took a seat at one of the chairs. Still feeling uneasy, I told the lady at the gate what happened and I was still shaken up. She understood, and said if she saw the woman matching the description near the gate, she'd make sure she wouldn't come near me, and if she did, security would be alerted. Well, it turns out my gut was right. After about an hour, she found me sitting in a secluded corner at my gate. She starts to walk up to me when I got up, walked to the lady at the gate, and pointed Karen out. Karen marches up to the woman at the gate, and this is the conversation. Karen says, Excuse me, that child behind you is not allowed to be in the airport by herself. The lady at the gate turned to me and asked if I was an unaccompanied minor. I answered, no. The woman then tells Karen, well, if she's not, then she can be in the airport by herself. Karen then says, she's lying to you. The woman then turns to me and asks to see my boarding pass. She reviewed it and said it looked fine and then asked to see what I showed Karen. I handed her my driver's license, which also looked fine. 
Karen demanded the woman at the desk hand me over to her so she could take me to her gate and find security. Now, this really scared me. I knew I wasn't going anywhere with this woman, but it didn't stop me from being scared. I genuinely felt like she was trying to kidnap me. The woman asked Karen, Ma'am, is this girl your child? Karen answered no. Then I'm afraid she doesn't have to go anywhere with you. Karen then says, She has to. She's rebellious and she's lying. I am clearly more qualified to take care of her considering I have kids and you don't. Okay, well that did it. At this point, I could feel a panic attack coming on. The nice woman must have noticed this and she told the Karen that either she goes to her gate and leaves me alone or security is going to be called. Karen huffed and puffed, saying the front desk lady doesn't know her own airline policies and that she'll be calling 911 for child endangerment. And Southwest was going to get shut down for this. The lady at the desk only nodded. After Karen was done with her rant, she walked away before security could come. Before she left, the lady asked her name so she could file a complaint for her, which was an obvious lie, and Karen told her. The lady at the desk offered to find her gate, informed them of what happened, and made sure that she didn't leave her gate to make me feel safer. I agreed, and we found out that her gate was in the international terminal. Now, knowing that this woman wanted to take me to a completely different terminal, the international terminal, made me even more scared. Her gate was informed about the situation, and they said they'd make sure she wouldn't leave the terminal once she arrived. It made me feel a lot better. Guys, I don't even know what to say. So this story starts off as a woman being nosy and a bit entitled. But as the story progressed, it kind of sounded like she was trying to kidnap OP. Like, was she testing the waters by asking OP, how do I know you're not running away from home? And repeatedly asking where her parents are and telling her that she has to come with her. I mean, airports are generally safe if you pass security, so even if she was trying to kidnap OP and take her on an international flight, that definitely would not have happened. Super, super creepy nonetheless. About six or seven months ago, my neighbor gets a drone. Now, I don't mind people having hobbies, but for some reason, he insisted on flying the drone like the biggest jerk possible. He would hover in front of other people's houses and windows and try to race cars going down the road. And worst of all, he had a habit of flying his drone in my fenced backyard, buzzing over my dog, diving low just over my dog's head before circling around to do it again. Now, my dog is not small. He's about 70 pounds and a Malamute, but the drone terrified him, and I was worried what would happen if it hit him. I had knocked on my neighbor's door and asked my neighbors several times to please not fly into my yard and explain that it was scaring my dog but he basically told me to get lost and laughed in my face. When it still continued, I called the police. Unfortunately, there wasn't much they could do other than ask him to please not fly over my house. This resulted in him essentially upping the ante and getting petty with me, flying his drone into my yard more than ever. Finally, in late December, it happened. My dog gets tired of him flying his drone around him and managed to catch the drone right as it was diving towards him. My dog shreds the drone. The thing was a jumbled mess of wires and plastic when he was done with it. My neighbor was pissed. He storms over to my house swearing, threatening to sue me, and said he was calling the police for destruction of property, which I ignored. A week later, I get a summons to small claims court. He wanted $900 for the cost of his drone and an additional $300 for supposedly denying him access to his property, as the drone sat in my yard for a couple of hours before it was retrieved. Now, I said, screw that. He could have killed my dog. It turns out, him suing me was the best thing to ever happen. When we got to small claims court, the judge basically laughed away his claims when he said that I had intentionally trained my dog to attack his drone. But little did he know, I was prepared. I had dozens of photos of my yard, showing it was impossible for him to accidentally fly that low to my dog. I also had camera footage of my backyard, where you can clearly see him flying at my dog and harassing him, and I had saved all of my medical bills from taking my dog to the vet. $700 for an x-ray? Check. Another $250 to sedate him during the x-ray? Check. Why not? I don't want him being uncomfortable. Full dental exam with tooth cleaning and repair? $400. Then there was cost of anti-anxiety meds, a secondary checkup, wet food for a week just in case his teeth hurt, and extra for good measure. In the end, the idiot neighbor ended up owing me almost $2,000 and is now being investigated by the FAA for not having a registered drone and violating several FAA regulations concerning drone flight. He was constantly flying too close to an airport, too close to other people, the drone was out of sight of the operator and way above maximum altitude. 
and Joy never being allowed to fly drones again, dick. Listen guys, OP definitely put up with that for way too long. If someone was flying a drone onto my property, harassing my dog on a regular basis, and refusing to stop, I'm sorry, but I'm running out there with a baseball bat and swinging. With that said guys, the guy definitely got what he deserved. Play dumb games, win dumb prizes. Love it. Now, this happened about a year ago, when I was in high school. My calculus class was very chill. About 20 kids who were all friendly with each other, and we had a laid-back but enthusiastic teacher. At some point in the year, I really got into cooking. It's my stress reliever. Now, my family couldn't possibly eat the amount of food I was making, so I started to bring it to school and hosting Friday parties in my calculus class, with my teacher's approval, of course. Now, I'm Vietnamese, and live in a predominantly white town. This is only important because it meant that most kids from my town only ate American or European foods, and weren't used to eating other ethnic foods. So last year, around Lunar New Year, I wanted to bring in some Vietnamese foods to celebrate. I ended up making a bunch of steam layer cake and a traditional Vietnamese dessert. Some of my friends from class found out that I was going to be bringing a traditional dish and brought in their own dishes from their own cultures. We had different Indian, Korean, Filipino, and Spanish desserts. It was great, and I was really excited that my friends wanted to celebrate with me. Apparently, this was an issue for one girl in my class. Now, I would say that a dish that I brought in was an acquired taste, so when not a lot of people ate it, I wasn't offended. I knew that not everybody would like it. There was a lot of other food anyway. During our lunch period, one of my friends who wasn't in the class overheard a girl from my class complaining about the food in the lunch line. Apparently, she was saying really negative things about how I forced everybody to eat weird Chinese foods. Later that day, I texted her saying that I heard she didn't like the food and wanted to know why. Now, I don't really care when people don't like the food, but her calling it weird Chinese foods when it's Vietnamese didn't sit right with me. So she texted back that it was rude of me to bring in weird ethnic foods that nobody would have liked except for me, and that I should know better since most of the class was white. I told her if I bring in food to share, it's because I feel like it, and I don't have an obligation to cater to her taste. If she has an issue with it, she literally does not have to eat it, and other people can bring in food too. So if she wanted to, she can bring in something more to her taste. So after that, she told me that I should not bring in ethnic foods and foreign foods and just stick with American foods because we're in America. I thought, fine, if she only wants to eat American foods, then she can eat American foods. The next week, I brought in a bunch of Dutch donuts and started to pass them out at the beginning of class. When I got to her desk, I pulled out a loaf of Wonder Bread and plopped it on her desk, saying, Sorry, but these are Dutch. It's too ethnic for you. Here you go. All American cuisine. Later, she texted me asking me what my problem was, so I told her that almost every single food I brought in this year was ethnic, that it pissed me off that she only had an issue when it wasn't European. She's entitled to not liking Asian foods, but if you're going to complain about it being ethnic, then you'd better have that same attitude when the ethnic food is white. She did not complain about the food again. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, we survived another one. If you enjoyed the stories today, do hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode of our slash entitled people, a Karen forces OP to give her son free samples. And it goes terribly wrong. She literally almost ended her boy that day. <laughs> guys, check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.